All right, folks, I just want to share with you my findings with um, some um, adhesives for low energy plastics such as polyethylene, in this case, high density polyethylene. Um, and this is especially uh, useful, I think, um, for uh, kayakers who need to repair and add modifications and such. Of course, um, here's the general rule of thumb. You got HDPE, which this is a, a piece of a kayak, a Hobie kayak, and you got a crack in it or hole in it. You're not going to use any of these. The ideal way to repair that is a thermal, thermal bond, and you're going to uh, basically heat weld uh, additional material into that crack. And there's methods online you can research it. Now, of course, when you're fastening things to the hole and whatnot, you have a variety of things there. You can uh, um, uh, use a well nut, you can use a, uh, an aluminum uh, plastic pop rivet, you can use stainless uh, uh, nuts with backer washer and nylock, all great things. But there are times where you might need to use some sort of adhesive. Um, one, uh, one example for me was um, one of my brass inserts in the gunnel of the kayak uh, was spinning. Uh, the actual screw that screwed into the insert, it's a, it's a brass female threaded insert, broke loose. I had to take that out and I used epoxy to put that in. And the best epoxy I found is this Loctite AA3035. It's roughly $40 to $50 a tube. This is just a small regular tube. It's uh, uh, 1.69 fluid ounces, whatever. So anyway, again, thermal weld, melting the actual plastic, which is high density polyethylene into the crack. That's the best way to repair a crack, but you might need to use some adhesives in the future. I wanted to just quickly and briefly touch on this product, Lexel, and I think there's another product by DAP that's a direct competitor. This is a Lowe's product. DAP is the Home Depot product. I like this stuff for through hole fasteners to seal. It just works really well. Very sticky, and the best way to do this is put a little bit, a little bit goes a long way, fasten, let it bulge out, and don't smear it. Leave it alone. Lexel in this case. This is just good um, uh, elastic sealant. Okay, it's not an adhesive. Okay, moving on to the adhesives. I've done tests on this, and these two is, are the only two I've used. There's another product that's very good that I hear from 3M called um, Scotch Weld. I forgot the number, 8010, you'll have to look it up. A lot of people have had success with Scotch Weld. It's a messy application, it clumps, it's not real clean. This is kind of the same way a bit. It looks almost like um, um, silicon that isn't smooth. It's got a texture to it once it sets up and uh, uh, dries. This is the best stuff. It'll actually stick. When you start to try to chip it away from here, it stays on the HDPE. I do uh, lightly sand the surface a bit and uh, apply it. This is a, a product that's only maybe five, six bucks. JB Weld Plastic Bonder, it's trash. I don't like it. It might work for acrylics and plexiglass fairly well or other uh, plastics, but for HDPE, don't even go with this. And this final demonstration here, I wanted to do a test of 3M5200. This is the slow cure. It's used in marine applications. It's a permanent application. It's meant to be permanent. But how permanent does it stick to HDPE? And this is a uh, very simple test. I, I can do a variety of other substrates, or, or not substrates, but um, uh, you know, material to adhere to the HDPE substrate. But I just chose this piece of plexiglass. I'm gonna move this over here. I chose this piece of plexiglass, which was cut with my bandsaw, so it's got good texture here on the cut edge. And if you look here, I did sanded. I sanded this section fairly well. This is a virgin section. And this section is heated with a torch. And I don't know what they call it. It's a, a thermal, uh, 
thermal priming or something. It's, it's online, not a lot of topic about it, but I use my yellow Bunzomatic torch. It, that thing's hot. And I just slowly did a circle here until I started to see the surface change sheen. Um, and I didn't want any deformation. So I did a thermal prep here on this section. So it's going to be from about right here to where the glue, uh, to, to where the 3M5200 ends here. This is set up for seven days. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to do a flex test. I'm going to grab here with both hands and I'm going to uh, push and see what happens and then I'm going to um, peck at the at the adhesive that's left behind and see how it performs. Let's go ahead and do this. Alright here goes. <laughs> well you know I was hoping that it would glue better but it popped off equally easily easily along this this path so sanded virgin or <clears throat> or thermally uh, dressed I don't know what you call it it's heated in this section I bet if I heated a little more I was just kind of careful here although this is a scrap piece it, it may have worked better but this is a testament okay this is 3m5200 this stuff is <laughs> the bomb diggity when it comes to wood to fiberglass, wood to wood, fiberglass to fiberglass, uh, uh, steel to fiberglass, steel to gel coated fiberglass. I mean, once it sets, uh, it's a terrible mess to remove. You're having to get chisels, you're having to scrape it with putty knives. And look at that, after seven days, very clean surface and prepped, that came off with ease. Now here's the uh, plexiglass, and I could tell you right now that I would have to chisel, chisel this, this bead. See the beads just breaking on the edge there. So anyway, I hope this was informative. If you think you need to glue things to HDPE, this is the only way to do it that I know of and it's expensive, but it does work. Thank you.